Welcome, welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. This is a great day to serve the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be overcomers. Let us be obedient. Let us be sprinkled with his blood, the blood of the Lamb. It is such a wonderful thing to know that in all the things that are going on around us, we can find comfort and stability in the Lord, in our God, in Jehovah Jireh, in the Lord our God, in El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, in Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heal us, in Emmanuel, God with us. So when we feel alone, just begin to say Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And if I know God is with me, I know that I can be hid under the shadow of the Almighty. So be encouraged. And I just wanted to encourage you today as we finish up chapter one of First Peter. It is a wonderful, wonderful teaching about obedience and the blood of the Lamb. So let's get started. First Peter 1 and 20. For he was foreordained, foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared publicly in these last times for whose sake? For your sake, for my sake, for my sake, for your sake. So we are encouraged that the Lord appeared for our sake and he is with us right now for he say I will never leave you nor forsake you so the importance of obedience is to remain under the protection of the most high God the almighty it's it's important let's not be like lot and crew and uh, go somewhere where there is just constant uh, perversion and think that we're going to be protected by the Lord. He looked in the city and he kept looking and he kept looking. And he kept lowering the numbers of Sodom and Gomorrah, looking for righteous people, righteous people, holy people, godly people. And he just got down and he said, I can't go no lower than this. So if there are just eight, eight, ten, 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 ten is a quorum, ten righteous, the city will be saved. If there are ten righteous elements within us our body can be saved it is the spirit of man that sustains man and the breath of God gives us life so for this let us look at what the Lord is saying he came he revealed himself he revealed his word in the beginning was a word and the word was what the word was God so he revealed his word for our sake First Peter 1 Peter 1.21, and through him you believe confidently in God, the heavenly Father, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith, so that your faith and hope are centered and rest in God. So Christ died that we would be faithful to God, our heavenly Father, our Father, our Father, so that we would be the manifested children of God. It is so, so relevant and imperative that we understand that he died and gave him glory. He raised him from the dead and gave him glory. And remember, and John, he say, this glory I give to you. So when we walking in obedience in the Lord, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, what he places uh, his glory, his love, his affection, his attributes 
up on us and in us. Since by your obedience to the truth, you have purified yourselves for a sincere love of the believers. See that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. Wow, that would change the world, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would change the world. What's wrong with the world? He just told us, what, that we don't look for the best from, from us, from other countries. We don't, huh. well, we won't go there. Since your obedience to the truth, through your obedience, by the truth, your truth, your obedience to the truth, you have purified yourselves. So how do we purify ourselves? How do we grow in holiness? What? Through obedience obedience be obedient be sprinkled with the blood connect that glory to god connect that and be transformed connect these words these power of the word the release of god being revealed in his word and be transformed genuine faith purified by what by fire what is that fire? It is the holiness of God. What? Because God is a consuming fire. And we have to know that when we are obedient, there is a work of purification going on in our lives. So when we stop lying, what? Truth will, we, will be revealed in our lives. Ooh, glory. Because that is part of the purification process. We are being transformed from liars to truth tellers. We are being transformed to thieves to givers. You see, we're being transformed from slackers to motivators. See what I'm saying here? That is a transforming power, a purifying power in genuine faith. It is the truth our obedience to the word of God that purifies us. Do you see how that is? Do you can you can you see that? Let me say that again. Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves for a sincere love of the believers. You know, we can't love the believers without first loving God. <laughs> And so we have to love ourselves as well. We can't love anyone without loving ourselves. And this is a, a real issue because of the sin that has been committed against uh, some of us and all of us, really, because the world, it don't do any, it, the world does not do anything but inflict, inflict, inflict sin, perversion up on the believer if we allow that, and that is, you know, you will not avoid uh, running into or seeing some of this just madness. And so we are impacted by that, and this is why we need the blood, the cleansing blood of the Lamb of God. Verse 123, for you have been born again, oh my God, born again, yes, born again, born anew from above, spiritually transformed renewed and set apart for his purpose. See, we're born again, not because we want to be blessed. We're born again for the purpose of God. And from following in obedience and being faithful to God, we are renewed and we're set apart for his purpose. And when we were set apart for his purpose, then we are blessed. The blessing, he said, will overtake us. He said, and set apart for his purpose, not of seed, not of of seed which is perishable but from that which is imperishable and what immortal that is through the living and everlasting word of god so we're back to the word of god we're back to what he what he say is the word of truth when we are obedient that purify us so he's reiterating that he's just simply saying that in a different way isn't that wonderful how the Lord uses the same concept over and over again, precept upon precept, line upon line, to teach us uh, repetitively what we need to become and how we are to go through that process. So when he said we we have been born again, that must, every individual 
that uh, say that they belong to the Lord, the question is, have I been born again? Have I been spiritually transformed? Have I been spiritually renewed? Have I, have I been set apart? Am I set apart for his purpose? Am I set apart for his person? For his purpose, question of eternal life. That is it. That is it. What is eternal life? Uh, being set apart for his purpose, living out the truth of the word, being purified, purified by the truth. See, it's not really uh, that difficult when we understand what the word of God is saying, when we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and show us what the word of God is saying. It is it just can't be avoided. We can't avoid uh, studying the word and applying the word to our life, living out the word. Without living out the word, there is no salvation. There is no salvation without living out the word. First Peter 1 Peter 1.24, For all flesh is like grass, and all is glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall off. 1 Peter 1, 25, but the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which was what? Which was preached to you. So is the, is the word of salvation being preached? Or is it some political uh, platform that's being preached? Is the word of God being preached? So this is what we need to ask ourselves. What? Who told me that? <laughs> you know, that's the whole beginning of, of, the, <clears throat> of the return of Adam and Eve to God. And the question was, who told you that you were naked? So who's telling you all this stuff? Where is it coming from that it comes <clears throat> and it's not in a line with the word of God? If, if it's not in the line, in the word of God. We must understand that. And he say, all flesh, all flesh, my flesh, your flesh, all of it is just like grass. It's going to wither and it's going to fall off. You know, it's going to go and the worm's going to eat it up. That's just how it goes. Or it's going to be cremated or whatever. This is what the the flesh is and what is what is the end of the flesh. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures forever. So if we have the word of God in our mind and in our spirit, it will endure forever. It will what? It will transform us. And it will transform us so that we meet the requirements of God. Refer back to the previous teaching and you, we, we will get the foundation. See, when we study the word of God, we're studying the word of God for a foundation so that we build on that foundation. <clears throat> it is such a step forward when we realize that when we study the word, we're building a foundation. We're building a foundation as we study and apply the word of God. So if I am a manipulator, then the word of God will point that out to us or point that out to me. And then I have to make the decision. Am I going to continue to be a manipulator or do I need to um, align with the word of God so that the word of God will transform me from being a manipulator from, to being a truth, a person that live out truth in my life? You see what I'm saying? This is what the word of God is about. <clears throat> and this is how we grow and be transformed in Christ Jesus, be transformed to the image and likeness of God. It is through obedience. It is through the sprinkling of the blood of the lamb. I just want to thank you for listening, but I, I also want you to ask yourself, uh, this challenge yourself that when you are speaking and you are saying things, ask yourself, who told me that? Where did that come from? Did it come from God? Did it come from the word of God? Or did it come from the prince of the powers of the air? And when we start doing that, life would definitely change for us if we truly want to live for the Lord. 
Now may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his wonderful loving face toward you and give you peace. May the Lord transform us and cause us to be purified by his word. May he cause his love to grow abundantly, overflowingly in our life that we may be alive to God, alive to God and living out as manifested sons and daughters of God, as we be holy, for he is holy, and be perfect, for our Father in heaven is perfect. May the Lord bless you, keep you, may he ever shield you from stumbling and falling. To our only true and wise God, our King of kings and Lord of lords, our Prince of peace, in Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord.